Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on the inverse cumulative distribution function method for generating random numbers. Previously, we talked about Monte Carlo integration, which is a procedure to provide an estimate for integrals of this form, where we can write the integral as the expectation over some distribution f of a function h of x, where x here is the random variable, x has a distribution f, and one way to provide an estimate of this integral is to draw samples from f, call those samples xj, calculate the function h of xj, and take the mean over all the evaluations of h, and we now have an estimate called the Monte Carlo estimate of this integral. This is great, uh, but in order to provide this estimate, we need to be able to draw samples from this distribution f, which oftentimes is easy because many standard statistical software now have the capability to sample from a wide range of distributions, but sometimes we need to sample from a distribution that is not available in the statistical software. As a reminder, the cumulative distribution function of a random variable x is defined as the probability that the random variable is less than little x. All right, so as an example here, if x has an exponential 1 distribution, then the cumulative distribution function f of x is the integral over the probability density function evaluated at 0 up to x. 0 here because the support for an exponential is 0 to infinity. All right, we evaluate that, and we have this function right here. So this is the cumulative distribution function for an exponential 1. Now, if we have a non-decreasing function, f, which a cumulative distribution function is, then we have a generalized inverse of f, defined or denoted as f minus, is the infimum of x over f greater than or equal to u. All right, so this is basically to cover the case of both continuous and discrete random variables. If we have a continuous random variable, we typically, uh, if available, we can just take the inverse itself of the cumulative distribution function. All right, so for instance, here was the cumulative distribution function for an exponential 1. We can invert that to find the inverse cumulative distribution function, and that's given right here. Okay, so how are we going to use this? All right, so this is the main result. If we want to sample from f, and we have access to its inverse CDF, capital F minus, then all we need to do is generate a random uniform, call it U, and evaluate U, evaluate the function F inverse of U. And that will be a simulation from the distribution of interest. All right, so sounds simple enough. Here's an example. We want to sample from an exponential one, so we take a uniform on 0, 1, we calculate this quantity, negative log of 1 minus u, and here we have a histogram of those realizations, and the red line is the actual density for an exponential 1 distribution. Notice here I said that or you can do this, because if u is uniform 0, 1, then 1 minus u is also uniform 0, 1, so either you can plug in u or 1 minus u here. Note that these x's will not be the same, but they will both be uh, distributed as exponential 1. That's the first example. The second example I'm going to use here is if you, want to if you want to sample from a truncated normal. So here's the notation for a truncated normal. So x is a random variable that, if untruncated, would have a normal with mean mu and variant sigma squared, but now we're truncating it to be between a and b. So this random variable, the probability density function has the same form as this normal mu sigma squared, uh, but only between a and b and everywhere else it's zero. Okay, so how would we do this? All right, we're going to use the notation here where capital phi is the standard normal CDF, standard normal here being a normal with mean zero and variance one. And the first thing we do is we calculate the quantiles of the cut points a and b. For this normal mu, for a normal with mean mu and variance sigma squared. 
We're going to call those quantiles PA and PB. And we sample then a uniform. Now in this case we're not using what we talked about before with the uniform 0, 1, but we're adapting the method a little bit. So now sample between PA and PB. Right, that is the sample between the quantiles of these two. And then we can sample, we can calculate the inverse of the standard normal CDF of U, multiply by the variance, and add the mean, or multiply by the standard deviation, and add the mean. And if we do this, this is what we look, this is what it looks like. In this case, we're using an untruncated normal with mean 5 and variance 9, but truncated to be between 1 and 6. Again, the histogram are the actual realizations of doing this procedure, and the red line is the true probability density function for this truncated normal. All right, so the bottom line here is that uh, if you can calculate the inverse CDF and if you can generate random uniforms, then you can obtain a random sample from the, any distribution of interest. The Providing random uniforms is typically not much of a hurdle because most uh, software, uh, even low-level languages, have the ability to generate a random uniform. The, the harder part is, is actually trying to find the inverse CDF. Sometimes it's not available analytically. Even if it's not available analytically, sometimes you can numerically approximate it, but this can often be very expensive to do.